What is going on, guys? DBG here, and today, lads, we have got a uh, a big, a big amount of players. Thirty-five. Well, seventy, in fact. The reason: dynamic duo super packs, and these packs historically have been some of the biggest packs in the game. Duo super packs have historically been huge. But lads, we got 35 of these. Unfortunately, none of these guys are relevant. None of these ones are relevant because they only go to 20 halves. Like someone was telling me that happened last week. Like it doesn't make I don't understand why. For like the first two or three weeks, all of these guys went up to 30 halves, 35 halves, now they're only 20 halves. They all go to Dark Matters, but they all only go to 20 halves, which is a little bit annoying. Then um for this one here, Shaq gets up to a 75 three ball. Still got Shaq on slow, which isn't great. But it does make this Shaq a hell of a lot better. And this Kobe probably just becomes the Invincible. Yeah, same card as the Invincible. Um, except he can't play point guard, I guess. With Kyrie Irving. Kyrie's animations are one of the issues. He goes up that one overall and gets every shooting badge, I guess. I'm going over these really quickly for LeBron. It's just an excuse to put LeBron in these packs, I think, given these five extra halves. I came getting to 60 halves makes zilch difference. Um, Corver and Millsap is an interesting one. And it doesn't boost Corver's speed. Like, these are just getting extra half badges. Like, sure, he goes and gets his 15 extra halves, but his stats stay the same. His stats doesn't make any difference with his stats. Um, Clyde, 35 halves. Clyde gets a little bit better. And what does it do to Sabonis? Does it boost his speed? It does. Oh, this makes Sabonis a lot more interesting. Especially, again, if you go and put one of these pace and space coaches, one of the, like, plus six ones that you get. Or even one like the seven seconds. Or even um, tri triangle. But imagine the, like getting him up with like Jock Vaughn. You're getting him to 88 speed. Okay, he becomes a really interesting center. He does become really interesting. This duo is interesting. This duo is just too expensive because Hayward's basically extinct. Although it does make um, Ingles go play. If you have an unauctionable Hayward, it could be interesting maybe. That's the way I'm looking at things. Um... It's all really about whether or not um, like yeah, it's all um, it's all really about whether or not uh, you have this card, to be honest. And then with this duo is kind of interesting because Poku goes up. I thought he go more in stats, to be honest. Chet and Poku will be a fun duo to use, and I don't think I'm ever going to get this version of Chet, so I just paid the, like, 15k for this one. If I ever want to use the Chet and Poku duo. Um, Alex Caruso goes up a tiny bit. The problem is, these guys are already basically perfect stats-wise, so they just get their extra half badges boost. Um, and then it's, as far as animations go, like, this Jordan is already a beast. The only issue thing with this Jordan, this Scotty might basically just become the... He's not going to be that different to the Invincible Scotty, I guess. This Jordan, the problem is just Jordan release. I don't think which of these cards I have. Like, I don't have most of these duos, to be honest. Like, if this actually makes Noah way better. Like, Noah is a three-point rating away because he gives really good release. And then with D-Rose, he's already a Dark Matter. Like, the ones that are already Dark Matters don't really get much better. Like, Rashard, I don't even think Rashard, you're going to see him get much better. He does get some extra halves. Problem is that all these guys are already perfect cards anyway. That is one of the big issues, and it doesn't change animations. Doesn't really, like, imagine only 55 total stats to get from a 96 to a 99. And, like, he goes to a 99. He goes plus four with plus 30 total stats. That's wild, isn't it? He literally doesn't improve, he doesn't improve notably in any stat and goes up to a 99 just from half badges. I thought he was going to get it. They are going to juice some of these guys. Guessing is just an excuse to get AD. Yeah, it's an excuse to get AD in these packs. Um, this is you I have, though. And, of course, Kobe's the one who doesn't get 60. Of course. Shaq and Kobe are the ones that don't get 60. Plus two total stats. It, like, it is what it is. And I couldn't care less. They get volume shooter. Um, Pow and Mark. Mark goes up irrelevant in stats but he gets some half shootings get some more half defensive okay mark becomes pretty decent and pow pow's issue is his release anyway so it's not like he's gonna change much as a card 
Um, Grant Williams and Robert Williams, the worst release combo in the game. These guys legitimately are both have broken releases. Both, like, Robert Williams is a usable card. Grant Williams is not. He is not. Are any of these duos even interesting, to be fair? Thurl and Dantley. Okay, Dantley's chick. Okay, Thurl and Dantley might be that duo. I guess Dantley up to 40 halves. And Thurl goes up to 35. I mean, Thurl's already good, but like, they made Dantley a beast. Dantley could be really good. Jason Kidd. He still can't shoot. This is like the broken release duo. Both of these guys are broken jump shots. Um, John Wall. Kelly Oubre. That one could be nice. Kelly Oubre gets quite a lot better in defense and gets some badges. John Wall becomes better. Okay. Okay, this is pretty decent. And Jermaine O'Neal and Jonathan Bender. Okay, so Jermaine O'Neal, he doesn't get his release change, but he's still going to be a good power forward when you play him beside Jonathan Bender. 94 three ball. Gets all the hoffs. Goes from 11 to 35 hoffs. Yeah, top five small forward in this game, if you want to use him with Jermaine O'Neal. This is probably the one duo I would really look at using. Did they change his release? Booker, no, he's still at Booker Collins. So he's not going to get much better. But like Dolph Chase was a card from January. Who gets a little better on defense. He still has got Coos, isn't he? Yeah, he's still got Coos, but that John Collins up, I think, ruins any good release. Um, This is interesting, I guess. I'm guessing Peyton just becomes his other Dark Matter, I guess. So that is an interesting one. Kemp and Peyton. And Draymond and Wiggins. Both of the 40 halves. If you want to make a 20... If you want to make a Warriors team. Draymond is basically perfect stats-wise and badges-wise. It's just Draymond's release sucks. So of all these duos, I'd say... Does Sean Bradley get a boost in speed? But they really don't boost. They really only give him a 55 three ball. Boost that three ball to 80. And maybe we're talking... No, Sean Bradley's... It's not worth using Dirk to play Sean Bradley. I almost like don't mind Dirk. Steph and Clay, uh, to be expected. So for all these duos, the ones that I would probably look at are like Dantley Thurl. I think Jermaine O'Neal Bender is not a bad duo. Um, I think... This one could be interesting, actually. I haven't looked at this. He barely gets better. Please tell me at least Calvin Johnson improves. Plus 62 total stats and 42 of them being passing vision. <laughs> oh, 2K, you did what you bumped up in passing vision. You gave him a plus 42 passing vision. A stat that doesn't do anything. <laughs> oh, 2K. You never fail to amaze me. But um, nah, there's about three of these duos that are useful. Like I wouldn't. These cards are already so gassed as they are, the duos don't really matter. But at the end of the day, some people do like using dynamic duos. And I do think the Jermaine O'Neal Bender one might actually make my team. So in that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.